If you're getting ready to sell your house, I am sure you've been all over Zillow and Redfin, checking out the competition and trying to see how other sellers are showcasing their houses. Well, you know those homes that just jump off the page, they invite you in and make you want to scroll through all 50 pictures? Well, that's the goal. That's what we want for your house as well. And chances are those sellers have hired a professional stager. They've paid anywhere from three to even $10,000 to have this overall return on investment. Well, understandably, a lot of folks don't have that kind of cash at their disposal. Today, I'm gonna to share some very approachable DIY tips for light staging. It's gonna help you maximize your return when selling your house, and we're starting now. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Erica Monroe, I'm a realtor in the Bay Area and I specialize in Solano County. Even though today's market heavily favors sellers, I still encourage my clients to at least present their home with some light staging. Everybody loves a beautiful house, one that feels crisp, clean, and has a neutral aesthetic that's gonna to appeal to the broadest audience possible, hoping to generate multiple offers and getting you top dollar for your house. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to lightly stage a master bathroom as well as master bedroom or guest room. This is the before. This bathroom currently serves as a very functional space. You can see there are plenty of toiletries, there's a paper towel holder, lots of colorful towels, laundry baskets, it's not exactly the most presentable space. This is actually a great room to work with because it has some updates, but not everything is completely remodeled. You've got updated flooring and countertops. You've got builder grade, mirrors, cabinetry. So we're not starting with a completely perfect canvas and I think this is gonna be most helpful for you. Before we start the fun stuff, we need a completely blank canvas to work with. So we need to start removing personal items. If you have any personal pictures showcased, I highly encourage you to put them away. Buyers have such a hard time picturing themselves living in that space if they see pictures of your family everywhere. Okay, so before I start actually setting decor out, I like to compile everything in one area so I see how the colors and textures are gonna work together. I like to select three colors to work with and then have shades of those colors to create my palette. Design is visual, but it's also through texture and touch. So you'll notice we have uh, several different types of textures here. Some are smooth like the soap dispenser. The candle has a ribbed texture. Even our soft surfaces, our bath mat, our bright white towels come in a smooth and then very textured. And this just provides a higher perception of value. It looks more polished. If everything's uniform, it's gonna feel very two-dimensional. So introducing different textures through hard and soft surfaces is gonna give a rich feeling. It's gonna help the overall aesthetic. Anything that would detract or deter from the aesthetic, take out of the pile. This all works really cohesively together to enhance that spa-like feel. I know design can feel really intimidating and overwhelming, but it's not. You have the ability to continue to work with it until you're happy. You can add and take away items. You'll know when that aesthetic is right, when the space feels clean and crisp and presents in its best light. I am by no means a professional stager or a professional DIYer. I am a make it work kind of girl and I've just learned some tips through trial and error. So for example, hanging a picture with two hangers, I don't know why I could never get it to align perfectly. So I learned this trick that I'm going to share with you. First, mark the middle point of the wall or where you want the middle point of the picture to hang. Then take a level and draw a really fine line with pencil. Make sure it's pencil and not pen because we're gonna erase this later. Next, we're gonna take that same roll of painter's tape and run it the width of the picture. Cut it to exactly the same length. And measure that width and find the middle mark and mark that piece of tape. Look at where those hangers fall and mark on the tape where you would actually have the nail or where they would hang from the nail. Take that piece of tape and mash up the center mark to the center mark on the wall. And now we have a guide for where to nail the nails. Make sure that the tape is aligned because again, this is our level and it's pretty much a foolproof way to hang a picture with two hangers and have the outcome that you want the first go. 
look at this transformation. It completely changed the overall aesthetic and feel of the space. It feels modern, it feels clean, it feels relaxing, which is exactly what we want, and it's gonna entice a broad audience. Check out the before again and see how much it's transformed. There's a larger walkway, it's light and it's bright, and it was a minimal investment. There's really not too much decor in here, but it completely changed the overall aesthetic. Let's move on to the bedroom. This is a guest room that's absorbed some of the older furniture from the house. We've got a darker headboard and bedside tables, which aren't always the most trendy, but we're still gonna work with what we have to minimize our investment and still make the room feel light, bright, and airy. Two quick tips for staging bedrooms. Number one, the bed is the largest piece of furniture in a room generally, so we can't ignore this. We really need to invest the most amount of time and money into the bed and into the bedding. That's what's gonna make it feel inviting, crisp, and clean. You'll also notice in this room, it's got a little bit of an odd corner. It kind of jets out from the wall and the dresser sticks out so far, it feels like a very narrow walkway. Anytime you have kind of an odd shaped corner or space, long wide mirrors help to make the space feel so much larger and it's a great way to utilize that corner. This is a queen size bed and I got a king size comforter because I want it to cover the very bottom and I'm gonna drag it all the way to the headboard so we have really crisp lines. Pillows are my nemesis. This is honestly the hardest part for me of staging. I just play around with it until I find the right combination. Just keep in mind you want different numbers of pillows in each row. I'm starting with two large ones because three would feel overwhelming, again making the bed look and feel small. Then we've got three neutral accent pillows. This is going to make the bed feel so polished and inviting. It's going to be on par with what a professional stager would offer. You can do some throw blankets. I like to keep it just really neutral crisp and clean. Look at this transformation. This feels like such an inviting and beautiful space and we really didn't do that much to it. It's mostly bedding and accent pillows. We hung a few minimal items on the wall just to make it feel warmer. And look at the tall mirror. It gives the perception of a much larger space. It's a great way to utilize that odd corner and it all just ties together beautifully. So you've had your crash course in light DIY staging. Do you know what else you need to consider as a seller? Check out my video on seller costs to make sure you understand what it's actually gonna cost you to sell your house. Thanks so much for watching. Please ding that bell so you get a notification the next time I post a video.